obviously, you know, you wrote a book uh, and you share a lot of your learning and you are just doing incredible work right now. But I guarantee that this is something and as you evidence and you know, your stories that you're sharing, that you've learned a lot through this process. So if you go mm. back to your first year of teaching and give yourself advice, what would that be? Whew. If I were to go back and give myself advice as a first year teacher, you know, some of the things that I think about, you know, number one is just the teaching is it's, it's all the things mm -hmm. like, and here's what I mean by that. You know, when I went in as a first year teacher, I remember just so desperately, like I didn't want to screw it up. Right? right. There were so many things that I was technically invested in. Like I need to do this and I need to do this. And my content standards are here and I need to share my lesson plans in here. There were like so many rules with it. But right. one thing I wish I'd been told in my first year is it's not about, or it's not about whether or not it's fun or it's rigorous or it's, you know, personal or professional it's, it's all the things that's, and so as a teacher, you know, just recognizing that you can have fun and you can have high expectations and right. have this classroom that's rich in teaching and learning. You can be professional and you can have personal relationships with your kids in terms of knowing what they love and, and forming those bonds. You can be about content and also have a love for the, the students in your room. And I think that would be one piece. Another piece of advice that I think about in, in my own head is to be you. And that goes back to what I talked about with the three people that I shared, you know, it doesn't all look the same. And right. so even though you might not look the same as your next door teacher, who's been there for 25 years, a, that doesn't mean that you are better or worse and, and be like teachers are all going to have different strengths and lean into those strengths and right. let that make a better connection with kids. And the last thing I'd say is this, is that, you know, you got to find the joy, right? Like right. I just wrote this book about how to, you know, thrive through really challenging times, but we have to be realistic about the fact that, mm. um, that teaching is hard and that this is hard work. Working with kids is hard. Working with your colleagues is hard. Sometimes working with your leadership is hard. Right. There are hard parts of our job, but there is also so much joy. And by the way, if there's no joy, it's probably not the profession that we need to be in. But for so many of us, there is incredible joy. So find what makes us happy and lean into that and figure out what it is that doesn't make you happy and find some ways to like remove that from, from your work. Because when we are happy, when we are able to bring our whole selves into the classroom, we are able to serve and love and care for and teach our students well. Yeah, I, I think I think that those connections between like authenticity that you talk about, which is so important, because kids will read through that stuff right away, right? If you're not who Absolutely. you are, I think that there is a, such a powerful connection between that notion of authenticity and joy, right? If I was going about my day being something that I wasn't, uh, that would get to me. I, that would, you know, I think a lot of times when we, you know, kind of act the way that we think it's important that we do. And this is something I always tell when, um, when I talk to, you know, we, we've done work together on speaking mm -hmm. and talking about this is that really just be yourself a bit louder when you're on stage. Don't try to be mm -hmm. what you see someone else being right. Because people yeah. read through that stuff right away. And I, I, it makes me love what I do because it, somebody actually gave me a really good compliment the other day. They said, I've seen you speak and I've seen you do podcasts in the way that you write. It's all the same. Like you're the same person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And you know, that's, it kind of makes me happy because I want to be myself, you know, and, and share some of that learning with me. So, um, I, I just love talking to you, Jill. You, uh, I, I really appreciated kind of getting to know you uh, a lot over the last year and, and watching your leadership journey, but also, um, I just love watching how many people you're influencing right mm. now. And I, I know that that's going to just actually grow exponentially. And, and then I can say, I knew you really early on, right? Well, I so appreciate that. And one thing that's really resonating um, that you've said in terms of me um, is be you, but be you louder. Yeah. And I think that there are so many of us that have gifts to share and have things to say, yeah. especially our teachers. And we just really need to empower them and give them yep. the voice to say and share those things. And that's why I love platforms like Twitter and blogging and yep. all of those things, because you get to do that. Be you, but yep. be you louder. <laughs>